RV friends. So I am Kim and I had several people asking about my tank because I shared a photo yesterday and asking for a video. So this is my best um, take on that. If you may hear children, you may hear cats, you may hear a dog, you may hear Frank, who is our robot vacuum. That's just life here. So this is a 45 gallon tank, but because of the way that I have pools set up and the way it takes up some of my molting space, I technically only have 30 gallon tank because I actually measured it all out and figured out the square footage on the bottom. There is molting space about five inches on each side behind um, long ways. I think it's like six inches in the length behind each of the pools for molting. The way I built my tank is I have egg crate. You can see it under here, stacked to hold my pools. So that way if I have a flood, I just take these pools out, take this egg crate right here out and I can just get a vacuum and suck up all the water because this is an acrylic piece and there's a dog and there's a cat that goes around the actual pool. I have it so that the base that the pool sit on is slightly larger than the pool so there's no pressure of these acrylic plates pushing on these one gallon pools. This is weather foam stripping that I put on and then I coated it in aquarium silicone so that way little crybies can't be nipping at it. And that's where everywhere where it touches the glass to keep the sand at bay. And that is on both sides. Um, I cut the acrylic myself. You can get like a $5 tool at your Home Depot store or Lowe's. Super easy, just don't cut yourself. The whole back and along the top part and it goes all the way down below the substrate is the black egg crate on top. Because I'm a visual person, when I built this tank, um, I figured out where my substrate was gonna be. So the whole bottom layer on the back is actually the white egg crate because it's a much stabler, sturdy um, egg crate than this black. This black is very pliable. So I do not recommend using it for the entire build because it's, it's gonna bend. Um, you can see where I have some bending there, which is fine, but for your main part, I do not advise it. So once I get all had all my egg crate in, I started applying these boxwood panels. These are from Target. I think I used eight in this build, but I bought four more um, because I am planning on building a topper but I'm going to custom build it, I think, and I'm still working on plans on that. All this wood besides this is forged from my property and besides the cork bark. Um, it's all oak that I sanded down some of the bigger pieces. I let it soak in a very super high soak, salt water content of, um, I think it did 38, which is actually higher than ocean water for 48 hours and then allowed it to dry for a week and I had it sitting on air purifiers. So it was constantly blowing air through it to make sure it's completely dried. This is um, some kind of aquarium, what I can't think of the name. That's like a little plastic house and under it, I found these plastic plant water catchers and I think they were at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it fit perfectly under there, so that's where I'm keeping my earthworm castings. I have a green sandwich up here, and I, if you want to put holes in plastic, it's super easy to get a lighter and hold it up to the end of a little screwdriver to get it really hot and just slide it on in. It'll make easy holes for you, so you can add zip ties. This one is going to have um, powdered foods in it that I'll change out every few days, and I have these that I got from Hobby Lobby that I'll use to swap out for fresh foods on the bottom. Lots of other fake plants like these little baby monasteras are from Petco. If you ever buy anything from Petco, especially from the reptile dis uh, section, make sure you look it up on the app first because it's always cheaper and they will price match in store. To help support the back of my wall of stuff, I use the Zoomed bamboo bars. They're amazing. 
I actually wrote the company and they assured me that they are um, resilient to rest in high, high humid um, atmospheres. And I, you know, let them know it's going to be about 80, 85 percent. And they said it should not have any issues. This is actually a soap dish from Walmart. It has this little tightening screw on it. This thing is amazing. Um, although I do have it also zip tied to my build and it's also holding some of the wood. All my wood works against each other so it holds the other wood around it in place. And the only thing touching my sub is this white bowl but there's no pressure in there. Um, there's just a little bit from that piece. That plastic thing this piece of quart box is actually sitting on some, you can see it, white egg crate that I doubled up and then just set it on the sand. And then I um, got some of my fake plants and put them inside of each other with a zip tie and zip tied that to that to keep that from rolling. This black support beam that goes all the way down, goes all the way down to the bottom through my eight to nine inches of sub. And again, I use that all along, try to see the back side. My wires have wire loom around them so crabs cannot pinch them. What that is, is a plastic, you can get it at any Home Depot store or hardware store. It goes around your wires, it has a slit in it, and it's pretty um, hard plastic that they can't snap it into. This piece was from Amazon. My Adat is from Amazon. This basket is from Amazon. It's super amazing. It doesn't have any holes, so I don't have to worry about the sagna moss coming out. But it does come with like a sticky that has metal screws on it. So I threw that in the trash and I zip tied it. So back to the build. All around my tank, I used the same black um, egg crate to build a barrier. And it goes all around, all around the front. You can see that's also why I have these to help hold it up. There's also a part, a bar of it that I made that goes across my support beam bar. But that's how I'm able to hang all this stuff around and I can actually hang more things across if I want. Um, crocheted little ladder I made. I used a traditional greeny um, stitch just because it's kind of holy. That way it allow airflow and that is actually non-bleached organic food grade butcher's twine. It's a little bit more expensive, but because it's food grade, I feel a little bit safer. And the fact that it has not been treated with any kind of chemicals whatsoever to bleach it, to make it white or any other color. I use it also to hang the sea urchins. That little dish was an amazing thrift store find, but it just looks so pretty in there with a the color of like terracotta. What else? These long things are from Walmart, do have a metal tip on them. They just easily pop off and then I just zip tied them to things. In all, I think I used a close to, well, I know I bought a pack of 200 zip ties and I have no left. And I broke into some of my husband's. Now some of that was broken and cutting up because I kept moving stuff around because I wanted to make it build a little better. But overall, I used probably 200 zip ties easy. And with these bars, I also made this little platform. This is zip tied in the back, but I use zip ties to make a hang down, and then I use some of that stuff to kind of cover up the zip ties. But yeah, uh, I'm using a Zoomed um, thermostat, and then I have the Bean Farm heat mat on the back. You can't see it, but it's the um, insulation. Uh, blanket stuff because we had a huge roll of it and so it was easy to use. There are a couple of aquarium plants in here. I have the one in the middle just because when I use my blue light that came with my tank it kind of does a cool lighting effect and so I wanted that to be in the middle. And because I know I'm going to be asked that super adorable crabby thing is actually a salt and pepper shaker from Cracker Barrel. And so I just soaked it in prime water and put it in there because he just needed to live in here. But yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I don't have any shells in here yet. There'll be shells up here. There'll be shells down there. Um, I'll have some shells sitting up here and some more along the edges. 
but the crabs I'm adopting, I don't know how big they are. There will also be shells, and this is going to be for a shell shop. I was supposed to get my crabs tomorrow from the lady I'm adopting them from, but unfortunately one of them has died, one of them has surface molted, and the other one, she says, seems to be okay. <laughs> so I'm hoping the one that um, surface molted pulls through. I tried to tell her to put the exoskeleton with it and try to get it by itself so it doesn't die or get harassed by the other crab. But she also moved our meat back, meat update till Sunday. So honestly, I don't know. Um, I already have ordered another bean farm heat mat and a thermostat that should be here Tuesday, I think, to go for my isolation tank. Cause I'm about to do PPS with them before they can go in here. Oh, and another thing that I wanna say is this little thing actually has crushed up clam shells, eggshells, and there are pieces of cuddle bone in that that are powdered and then there's more cuddle bone up there but yeah hope you enjoyed my little tank tour and if you have any questions again <laughs>